Facebook is now called Meta, and though Apple is still Apple, its year-end profit could be near $100 billion even with chip shortages and supply chain disruptions. Tesla's market value topped $1 trillion on news that Hertz has placed an order for 100,000 new vehicles, and Hertz posted a solid profit from a big jump in consumer and business travel. Nearly all signs point to economic strength, and this week our conversation asks, how do we make this strong market as inclusive as possible? In this edition of Commerce Code, Financing Inclusion, can we finally harness the social power of credit data? Dan Carell here, and this is Commerce Code brought to you by DCA, the Digital Commerce Alliance. Thanks for joining us for insight into the evolving world of digital commerce. A year ago, J.P. Morgan Chase pledged $30 billion in lending and spending over five years to support racial equity, and the bank issued a progress report on Tuesday. According to the report, J.P. Morgan Chase has issued $6 billion in loans for affordable housing and rental units and made a billion in loans to build affordable housing. Another $4 billion went into refinancing 16,000 mortgages for Black and Latino borrowers. Big institutions are making big commitments, and the point of these commitments isn't to engage in charity. The point is to bring everyone into an incredibly vital economy by examining and removing barriers that have kept certain groups out in the past. Today's conversation is with the newly appointed CEO of Vantage Score, Silvio Tavares. And yes, Silvio is the former CEO of the Digital Commerce Alliance and still its chairman. Vantage Score is a leading credit score model developer jointly owned by Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Its innovative credit score models have resulted in some 37 million more consumers receiving a credit score than would under conventional models. This includes millions of creditworthy minority borrowers. Vantage Score's approach affords millions of people access to credit who would otherwise be all but locked out from mainstream financial services. Silvio, welcome. It is so good to have you here on the Commerce Code podcast, of course, with which you're familiar let me start with this. You've had some pretty big news lately, and I'd love to hear more about it. Dan, great to be on the show today. And I just love what you've been doing with the Commerce Code podcast. You've really taken it to the next level, and I appreciate you for that. But as you allude to, my big news is that I've, uh, effective October 1, been appointed the president and CEO of Vantage Score. Vantage Score is an amazing company that has a mission beyond commerce. It is one of the two national credit modeling companies that really was a key innovator in the space of financial inclusion. I'm really excited about this new chapter. Really, wealth inequality is one of the defining issues of our time. And Vantage Score has really been at the vanguard of driving more financial inclusion and using new data sets to include more and more people effectively in mainstream credit. Still affiliated with the Digital Commerce Alliance. I'm still on the board of directors there, but very, very excited about this new role. So you're going to be busy is what you're saying? Yeah, just a little, but uh, so far so good. We've got an incredible team at Vantage Score. And in many ways, this is the exact perfect time for there to be more financial inclusion using new data technologies. Because it's a hot area right now, right? And to drill into that a little bit, there's been a lot of press attention, uh, media attention on financial inclusion, access to credit in particular. Do you think that the consumer finance industry is really responding to those needs? I think it's really clear that in terms of people and companies at the vanguard, fintech companies have really been at the forefront. They're using new technologies to bring more people into the mainstream credit. Probably the best example of that is the buy now, pay later companies, companies like Klarna and Affirm that have figured out you can just look at a consumer's recent transactions and based on that, extend them credit for short term periods. I think some of the large banks have been a bit slower, but I think part Part of that is not sort of a lack of effort or lack of will. It's just really been around the fact that they are dealing with so many different regulations and regulators that it makes innovation less rapid. But that too is changing. We're seeing some really large commitments from large banks to financial inclusion. It's really exciting to see this. And it's also exciting to see that increasingly large banks 
and fintechs like Vantage Score are collaborating around financial inclusion to bring new solutions to the marketplace that maybe wouldn't have been possible if it was just one sector doing it. Collaboration has become really, really key right now. So on the idea of new solutions, how is what Vantage Score is doing different than more conventional credit scoring models? Well, everything, uh, I would say, but just to make it more specific, the U.S. has the largest, most mature access to credit of any country in the world. But the way credit has been provided traditionally, you basically had to meet some pretty specific criteria. This has got to line up with some of the regulatory focus these days. You mentioned regulators before. So in your sense of things, Silvio, the CFPB, the OCC, are they now focused on financial inclusion? And is this a priority for the Biden administration? It absolutely is a priority for the administration, but it's also a priority for most companies. I think the silver lining of the pandemic and the silver lining around the Me Too movement, the George Floyd movement, is that more than at any other time that I've seen in my career, every company, every administration, every policymaker, they want to make sure that they are making the world a better place that they stand for something beyond just commerce, beyond just earnings per share. They want to make a difference in making the world a better place. And so wealth inequality very well could be the defining issue of our time. And the Biden administration, the regulators in that administration, as well as industry, they want to take active, concrete steps to rebalance wealth inequality to close the racial wealth gap. And it turns out we have the technology to do it. And Vantage Score has been entirely laser focused on using new data sets, new technology to enable more people to have access to credit. So we all, I hope, learned in high school or college or something is that the 20th century history of this issue to some extent, or at least came to be understood through the lens of housing and access to housing and all the stuff, right, that happened in the 20th century there on, on a racial basis. So your history with DCA, your work, I think, has been more in card link payments and then into the broader payment sector. But the mortgage market is huge, has a big impact on all this stuff that we've just been talking about, Silvio. And so what about the FHFA and the mortgage market? And where does Vantage Score kind of fit in there? When we talk about wealth in America, the reality is that most Americans build wealth through owning a home. And if you talk about the safety net for Americans, the safety net is often their home. And the key to owning a home for most Americans is having access to a mortgage. And when we look at the past, it's very clear that certain groups have not had equal access to credit to buy their home. And that's just not right. And policymakers and industry want to change that and change that dramatically. Now, it turns out that the government unintentionally created, you know, basically a monopoly. And we've been working really closely with the regulators pursuant to a law that Congress passed in 2017 that would basically promote competition in credit scoring for mortgages. And so we expect to have the answer to that in 2022. And the result of that would be a whole new generation of buyers to have access to credit for their homes. So we expect it to have a very significant impact. And I'm sure you can tell by how I'm speaking about this. I'm incredibly passionate about this. This is a way to really make our society more just, more equitable, and more inclusive. And I think really right across the board, people can really believe in that and get behind that. So we take that vision for where you want to take this and then the founding mission of Vantage Score from the start. It was a play that was about applying the most advanced technology and the most advanced data to improve access to credit and to, to achieve that vision. So as you think about the future in your new role, how do you think about leveraging technology and data to help improve access to credit? Our DNA advantage score is around technology and innovation. And people really kind of focus on the vice of technology, but the reality is there's huge virtue in the use of technology. And Vantage Score has really been at the forefront of that. We're looking at alternative data sets because basically everything in our life now is digitized. We're using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So as we look to the future, 
We're just going to be doing more of that more rapidly. And the punchline for consumers and financial institutions is we're going to have credit scores that are more understandable, more accurate, and more predictive of a consumer's ability to repay a loan. And that is something that is good for everybody. It's good for the economy. It's good for consumers. It's good for banks. And so the future is very exciting, more data-driven, and more financially inclusive. So you've obviously been pretty engaged with Vantage Score across the last couple of months as you've been thinking about and then deciding to take this opportunity. I'm going to just close with one last question. What's the coolest thing you've learned as you've been diving into this and thinking about this journey forward? What's a factoid you'd leave us with that you think is really interesting? You asked the question sort of as a positive, um, but I will tell you that the coolest thing that I've learned so far is that, unfortunately, there's a pretty significant proportion of Americans that don't have access to credit and a credit score through no fault of their own. We talk about this as credit scoring deserts or scorability deserts. They're like vast swaths of urban and rural America. And we've actually broken this data down. You can actually go to the Vantage Score website, Vantage Score com and actually learn about these scorability deserts. And it kind of broke my heart when I saw that data. There's almost 48 million Americans that don't have one through no fault of their own. And it's a it's a it's a sad fact, but it's a great opportunity as well because it turns out we've got the data and we've got the technology to fix this. And so what gets me excited every day when I roll out of bed and start my work days is thinking about all these people in the future that are going to be able to get a mortgage, get a credit card, get a car loan that have been locked out of the system. And I'm just picturing in my mind the smiles, the productivity, the opportunities that these people are going to have because of the technology that Vantage Score brings to the market. Silvio, I have every confidence that you will make the world more than a slightly better place. It's really exciting. It's interesting stuff, but also important. And I know you're busy these days. And so thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you on. And we look forward to tracking your movements going forward and seeing what you're doing at Vantage Store. Dan, thank you so much. And I appreciate you so much. Just a phenomenal interlocutor and appreciate you having me on the show today. Coming right up, closing thoughts on the future of rich data and financial access. About 10 years ago, I was involved in establishing around a dozen farming credit cooperatives in Tanzania. I learned a lot. One of my big takeaways was the incredibly high cost to originate and to oversee even small loans. Any kind of audit of the books began with a two to four hour drive and a four by four over roads of Well, I mean, sometimes there were roads. And the whole loan portfolio in any village was usually a few thousand dollars. But with credit, you could buy high-yield seed, and with no credit, you couldn't. Simple as that for the farmers there. Some years, that's the difference between eating and not eating. So it was totally worth it, even though in a financial sense, it definitely wasn't. It was much more expensive to originate and collect loans in some villages, since they were so far away. If the weather was good, it might be a six-hour drive. If it rained, you probably wouldn't get there. Normally, a bank just wouldn't lend there, so there'd be no high-yield seed for those people. But there's a tech story here, of course. The spread of cell phones was the only reason any of this was possible to begin with in any of the villages near or far. Even basic phones transformed people's lives because they made it possible to communicate in real time and to extend credit in a way that more or less worked. There are always lagging barriers in the systems we've created, like assuming the village at the end of the road isn't worth it. Digital commerce innovation is dropping transaction costs so low now that we can start to imagine a world where those lagging barriers are gone. I'm excited about the possibilities here, the work that's starting and the stuff Silvio was talking about. It won't be easy, but there are people who have the motivation to get it done. To find out more about the latest trends in digital commerce and digital advertising, check out our website, www.digcomall.org. That's www.digcomall.org. For the Digital Commerce Alliance, take care of yourself and take care of each other. God bless you. This is Dan Carell, signing off.